Hi, and welcome to the Tomato Timer, a podcast about learning to learn. I'm Zubair from Xenos, and I'm tuning in live with experts from around the world, asking your questions and hearing their stories. All before the timer goes off. 24 minutes and 39 seconds to go. Hi, and welcome to episode 15 of the Tomato Timer. Today, we would like to welcome Kate Self onto our podcast. Kate is a degree apprentice in digital and technology solutions at BT, British Telecom. And as she pursues her apprenticeship, she is completing her undergraduate in digital and media solutions, among her other qualifications and courses. She's also passionate about becoming a role model and encouraging women into STEM. Kate, it's awesome to have you. How are you? Hiya, thank you for having me. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Very well. Um, Kate, one of the things that really interested me when I was reading your bio was that you didn't really start off um, sixth form feeling like you wanted to get into engineering. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So um, throughout school, I never really thought about engineering or anything like that as a career. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I was more looking into going into law and becoming like a legal secretary. Mm. Um, It was just by a fluke I picked. Um, ICT is um, one of my A-level subjects. Okay. But um, I really enjoyed it, but I never really thought about it as a career, to be honest. Um, Then BT actually came into my school and done a massive talk about um, grad schemes and procurement. And I was like, well, one, I don't really want to go to university. And two, procurement doesn't really sound like the right option for me. Yeah. But then my friend really wanted to do the work experience. I was like, oh, okay, I'll come along with you. Um, Spoke to the people running the sessions and was like, oh, I'm not interested in it at all. Um, Then they actually introduced me to an ex-apprentice who's now my manager. um, And he introduced me to the world of like TV, engineering, um, and how it gets basically from say a football stadium into your home and from that week I was like oh my god this is my dream career I've got to do whatever it takes to get into this <laughs> and absolutely loved it. That's amazing so what what are those things that you tend to look at during your apprenticeship and during your job I guess because you're working as well right? Yeah so um, I get a bachelor's degree as well as working on the side so um, every six months, we actually rotate around different teams within BT Tower, mm-hmm. um, but it's all on the TV side of things. So it could be um, in operations, which basically looks at all TV content. So I think it's 99.999% of um, preview TV traffic actually comes through the BT Tower. Okay. So we monitor all of that, making sure like ITV doesn't go down, BBC doesn't go down, as well as supporting like BT Sport. Um, It could be on the design side of things and the network and the implementation. So I've gone out to all the Premier League football grounds and installed um, some kit in the flight cabinets out there so the BT um, Sport truck can come and plug into and then we can broadcast that over our network. It can be a whole range of things. That sounds really cool. You get to go to super cool uh, stadiums as well. Yeah. So I'm not interested in a football at all, but telling people I've been into <laughs> like Chelsea Football Stadium, everyone's like, oh my God. Yeah, go a tour of stuff like that. So there's loads of good benefits. <laughs> Absolutely. That sounds really cool. So how does it feel kind of, I'm sure you're developing a lot of other skills as, aside from just, um, I guess, studying, right? What, what, what are those skills and how do you feel about it all? Yeah, so um, when I actually first joined the apprenticeship, I was probably one of the least confident people I knew. Is in at school, I would never get up and present to like a massive group of people. Yeah, and I think it was like three months into my apprenticeship, I was on a video for like BT's website, and I pre- um, presented to a group of a hundred like stakeholders and government officials and stuff like that so like my confidence has tremendously grown like even doing something like I am now like this podcast is incredible that is amazing Um, congratulations yeah you get to do like thank you (laughs) you get to do loads of like leadership um, and managerial stuff as well so although I'm in the last um year of my apprenticeship I'm actually managing a team of 12 as well which is really cool so we just get so much responsibility and like literally Anything we want to do, we basically can go and do. So it's just incredible, to be honest. I would definitely recommend it. That's so cool. And what do you, so one of the questions we had was about balancing your, your work, your studies and your personal life, especially when you're working, when you're learning and how, how does that come about, especially from the time management point of view as well? Yeah. So at the beginning, it is quite tricky. It's quite a lot to get your head around, obviously, because you're doing a degree, you're working and then everyone wants a social life as well. Absolutely. 
but to be honest it's quite good, easily managed so um we go to university um on block release so we'll go for like a week every month and then we also get every friday is a study day mm. so we have like the whole of friday just to dedicate to our studies and then if you feel like you need more time then you kind of reduce your workload focus more on your studies or vice versa if you haven't got as much studying going on you can go out and work as much as you want basically and like take them Fridays back and then like obviously social life we only work nine to five um and then to be fair our hours are flexible so I could come in at um eight work till four and all stuff like that so yeah it's really flexible and you can definitely manage it you've just got to be on top of your work basically that's really cool I actually was interested right at the start as well I I to ask you the question but maybe i can circle back to it now um you said that you weren't as interested to go to university while you were at school um what what made you feel like that and has your opinion changed or or anyway in any way like now um to be honest when i was at school i didn't enjoy it as much like i didn't really like the academic side of things i was definitely more wanted to get hands on and stuff like that hence why i opted for an apprenticeship um, um to be honest the only reason i would have gone to uni was more for the nightlife <laughs> and the social side of things <laughs> but a lot of my friends went to uni so i still got to see that i expect yeah but since doing the degree i kind of realized how beneficial it actually is I don't think I would have changed it because I think having the mixture of both, like the academic side of things and getting hands-on is really valuable to me. Obviously, if you're looking for a career that you do need a degree for, say if you want to become a doctor or something like that, then I think university is definitely worth it. Mm. And actually attending uni has changed my mindset on it massively. Yeah. So that actually builds on to another question that I have. Um, obviously, you in some ways your degree was very skill based and not just the actual like, kind of the, there's obviously the academic side of stuff but you you've learned a, a wealth of skills as as you've explained to us right now um and just in your opinion is it wiser to opt on learning a skill and moving on to the next or to stick on one and try to master it um i think it varies depending what the skill is okay so if it's something like coding or something like that i think it is quite good to master the skill because obviously if you only know a little bit and then you want to go into career like to do coding or software or something like that you do need to have the skill mastered but looking at um my career to be honest and looking at people who I like inspire me they kind of are a master of all trades so they kind of don't have one specific skill they've got lots of skills they've touched on loads of different ones and i think that's quite inspiring to be able to say i've done this and this as well as just solely focusing on one but then it depends what you want to do and where you want to go yeah i, I kind of want to chip into that as well it's i guess the the really important aspect that you also get is the the fact that you're a unique human being and it's not just the skills but also your experiences that make you, you. yeah definitely and and, and it and I'm, i'm sure that you've experienced as well like when you're speaking to Uh, you know when you're talking to like heads of state or when you're talking to any group of people when you want to impress yourself you want to show off not just you know one facet of you that you know how to program but everything you know even if it's if it's not exactly uh, academic you know if i can i go play tennis or i go for a run or you know i'm a, i'm this that and and i i come as a package i'm a, a whole human being with all these skills and experiences i guess if you only can do one skill then you're more of a tool than a human right Yeah, definitely. I yeah. agree. So, yeah, really interesting. Um I now what now that you're I think you said you're coming to the end of your apprenticeship, what do you see uh what are you going to be doing next? Yeah. And um, so like I previously mentioned, we rotate every six months into the different teams. Yeah. And from October last year, I was meant to pick what team I wanted to go into, mm -hmm. but I'm too indecisive and basically couldn't decide. Um and a new ca team came up called Transformation. And I was like, oh, that sounds quite cool. I'll just go in there for six months and then make a decision and try just basically putting off the decision. Okay. But luckily for me, that worked out in my benefit as I absolutely love the transformation team I'm in. So I think I'm definitely going to assimilate into this team and I think I'll stay here for a few years. So it's basically looking at um, how to make the company better. So what skills do we need in the future? How can we retain these skills? Um, looking at our strategic locations, Um, and condensing them, making it easier for people to travel in and stuff like that. So it's not as techy as it used to be, but I like more the people side of things. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to stay in this team, I think. 
and then hopefully progress through there. That sounds really, really cool. Now, um, although you've definitely had an amazing experience through this whole apprenticeship, were there any challenges or, or issues you faced during your kind of experience over the past three years? Um, and how did you tackle them? Um, I think one of the main issues I tend to have is I say yes to everything. Okay. <laughs> so every opportunity, like, opportunity that comes up, I say yes to, which isn't a bad thing because obviously it gets me hmm. out there um, networking and everything like that. But then obviously when I'm in the last year of my apprenticeship, I'm writing my dissertation, basically working full time. It comes back to the whole time management thing. Yeah. And I can't simply do everything. Um, so that has been one of my biggest challenges is learning how to say no. Okay. But um, apart from that, I wouldn't say I've really had anything specific. Obviously, you all have your own little challenges, but yeah, nothing major. We kind of just get to do what we want. And as long as it's a good idea, you just kind of progress. That's amazing. Um, I wanted to start thinking a bit more about the STEM side of stuff and especially um, the women in STEM kind of uh, almost stigma that's associated there, the gender inequality that's still present. I know that in the UK and in, in many kind of developed countries, we are getting closer to somewhere where there is there is equality. But even still, there are so many challenges that, that females face when they want to get into these kind of careers or even study those degrees. First of all, how did you become a STEM ambassador? Um, so when I first joined BT, it was kind of quite well known in my department. So apprentices above me were all STEM ambassadors. So they kind of introduced me to the whole concept and was just mm. like, this would be a really good idea and I think you should really do it. Especially when I first joined the office, I think there's around 250 people in my building and I think there was only eight females when I first joined oh my gosh so there was literally like a complete lack of role models which to be honest was really daunting and shocked me when I first joined yeah so then to have this opportunity to become a STEM ambassador and become a role model yeah I thought oh my god this is amazing I've got to go and do it and get the word out there basically and and did you feel any invisible barriers or were there any barriers when you were trying to get into this degree or and in general do you see barriers for women trying to get into STEM? I wouldn't say there's noticeable barriers but yeah there's definitely some underlying so um, when I first joined the senior leaders and that were definitely seen as like a proper boys club um, mm. all into like rugby and stuff like that um, tended to go to the pub on the Friday especially where I was one of the only women. If I then walked into the pub, everyone would turn around and st like stare at me kind of thing. Yeah. But I think I just kind of learned to really just forget about it. Um, so even though I'm a female, like I can go to the pub with them and try and join in their conversations. But then we had a massive um, event for Christmas and there was all these speakers. And throughout this five-hour event, say, there was no female speakers. So I went up to one of the senior leaders and I was like, something needs to be done about this. Like there is a serious lack of role model. Mm. And I don't think they clicked until people started bringing it up and saying, look, this is an issue now. Um, so from there, we created a diversity and inclusion team. And it started off with just eight of us just looking at our department in the business, um, what we can do, not just for gender, but for social mobility, race and so on. Yeah. Um, and how we can change that. And then from now it's grown and there's like 50 odd of us all just trying to tackle this issue. So it's really interesting and really good to get involved. That's amazing. And and are there any other opportunities that you've pursued being a STEM ambassador? Yeah, so I often go out to um, careers fairs, um, to schools, to give talks about um, not just the apprenticeship, but like experiences, um, how university is not the only route. Because if it was anything like my school, there were so pushy for university you don't really consider other routes and mm -hmm. um, so it's great to do that and um, yeah talking about females so I'm actually quite lucky I've won a couple of awards around um, women in STEM wow. so from there I've got to um, go out and be this ambassador and role model um, which has helped through the STEM ambassador program to really push women in technology and just saying it's not as daunting and as bad as it sometimes sounds Everyone goes on about women and technology and how there is real lack of um, role models, which there is, 
but you can be part of the change. Absolutely. You know, you make the change that you want to see in this world. Yeah. That's so amazing. Do you have any special stories you'd like to share with us? Um, some like a, an experience that really moved you or uh, made you very, feel very passionate about what you're doing? Yeah, definitely. So um, mm -hmm. one of the awards I was up for is for the Institution of um, Engineering and Technology, so the IET. And um, we're at this event. It was like amazing, um, massive um, auditorium and everything. And then um, we were all sitting in the back room, like us six finalists. And then next thing you know, Rachel Riley just falls in. Oh my gosh. And just turns up and she's just like, hey, how are you? And I was like, oh my God. Like I was having a proper fan girl moment. Like, <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> and then she was just like, right, I want to help be the change of like women in technology. And she was just like, oh, what else can we do and all stuff like this? And I was like, am I seriously sitting here having a conversation with Rachel Riley about what we can do to encourage more women into STEM? Yeah. Like it was so surreal. And then I've been to another... Um, awards event which um steph mcgovern was hosting as well and it was the same sort of thing and i'm just like how the hell have i just met one these two really inspirational women and be able to chat with them about this stuff it's just crazy that is mental that is amazing um I i'm not sure how many of our um audience actually got those references because this is quite british I i'm sure people know rachel Riley. she's the she's the lady from eight out of ten cats mm -hmm. right yeah and she's she's actually a really smart and amazing mathematician, although she's like doing the numbers stuff. But yeah, she's she has a, a math degree and everything. It's like she's an inspirational woman. And, and it's it's super cool to, to know that you met her as well. Yeah, it was just a proper surreal moment. That's awesome. An amazing story to tell us. So what do you think that we could be doing in our own communities that could possibly reduce the stigma that is, is still associated? I, I know that... You've been doing such amazing work, but even hearing from you the challenges you're facing and things like, you know, going to the pub or talking about football or rugby or whatever. How do, how do we get away from that? And how do we, as, a, as, a, as humanity, take a shift away from having this kind of built into our, into our brains, oh, that, you know, we, can't, we, we are all these boorish guys need to go and, and do STEM subjects. Well, you know, I don't know what else the, those, those stigmas are. Yeah, yeah. Um... It's a tough one. I think it's going to be more of a like cultural change going forward because I think it's, mm. without sounding ageist, it has been quite a generational thing. So looking at how it's changed since, well, I've come in and I've been there four years to even when like we have new apprentices come in, the mindset's completely different. Like nothing really phases them. Yeah. And to be fair, me compared to like, um, say some of the older generation, nothing seemed to phase me out of like um, being a woman in tech and stuff compared to what phased them. And the same with like the years below, like they're not bothered by some of the stuff that I've been bothered by. So it is definitely changing. It is much more cultural and generational, I find. Mm. But then still we can do a lot more. So it's more just knowledge and like thinking around it. Like I said, the cultural mind shift. So it's trying not to think, oh, because I'm a woman, I can't do this. Or because I'm a different race, I can't do this. Or picking up like, oh, because I walked in the pub, it's definitely because I'm a female, they've looked at me. When yeah. someone else could walk in the pub and they're a white male and they'll get looked at as well. Like, yeah. I think it's definitely how we see stuff. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing about perspectives as well, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, well, you know, we're still kind of in a... A weird situation globally with with the virus and everything and we wanted to know how that has affected your your current kind of job and degree um to be honest it hasn't had too much of an effect i'm quite lucky that i am able to work from home mm. so i've got luckily my brother moved out like a few months before um corona kicked off so i've now turned his bedroom into my own little office which is quite a nice setup <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but uh, to be honest it hasn't changed massively obviously it's harder being able to interact with colleagues and stuff so how you go over to someone's desk and just have a quick chat get the answer you need and move on that now takes up a half an hour of your day yeah and having the mind shift between okay at five i'm logging off and work's done that's quite hard as well because you think oh i'll just do this i'll just do that but i find having my work in one room and then like everything else in the rest of the house has been a lot easier yeah 
Um, and like I said, I can do my work from home anyway, so that hasn't mattered too much. With the university side of things, it's probably taken more of a hit. So we were due to be presenting um, our dissertation and final major project work. Mm. Um, but now obviously that's all done over Zoom and um, Google Hangout and other stuff, which isn't the easiest. But then it's just one of them things you've just kind of got to embrace the situation. And then all our work, we're just uploading online now rather, rather than printing it out and um, taking it in. Yeah. So it has been quite hard adjusting, but on the whole, it's doable. And I'm lucky that I've still got my job. I can do my work and same with my degree. Mm, that's 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 really important. Actually, um, similarly, I had to do my dissertation presentation also through um, Skype. Um, and it was weird because, you know, I'd spent... I'm sure you have spent months producing and writing up my results and everything and had this amazing presentation ready. But at the end of the day, I had to do it through. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Such an odd experience. Slightly, uh, not as glamorous as I, I'd imagined it to be. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it's, it's a challenge we're all facing. So um, we're getting closer to the end of the episode, but I just wanted to get some more kind of insights and thoughts on a general basis on your experiences would there be any pieces of advice that you have for our students or or something else you'd like to share with us that could you know kind of bring some insight into our own lives yeah sure so um i would say anything that you want to achieve you can achieve just go and do it or try your best to do it if you don't know how to do it um look for a mentor or coach that could help you so that's what I found really helpful throughout my career. I've always been like, oh, I'm not too sure on this or I don't know if I could achieve this. Or I don't even know if I could go and work on that project. And having a mentor or coach or someone there has literally just been like, yeah, you can. And that gives you the confidence you need to go and achieve what you want to achieve. So definitely look at them um, for examples. And then whether it's university or your apprenticeship, just make the most out of your experiences. I never thought I would have achieved what I have in the four years I've been in my career. And what I've achieved has been phenomenal and I wouldn't change it for the world. So I'm sure everyone else can do the same. Yeah, that, that is an amazing point. Uh, I, I would just like to highlight that again, because mentors and um, people you can aspire to be and can even have a chat with has been such an important part of many of our lives. And I think it's a, it's a key to success uh, in a lot of cases because these are the people who really have also faced those challenges as well. It's not just them being these amazing, glamorous people at the top of the chain. You know, they're not, they haven't, they've been through all those issues that we're facing, all the, all the struggles and actually making mistakes, maybe even worse than us before getting there. So um, it's, it's amazing to have an, a mentor who has actually been through that and can then advise you and, and also be the kind of motivation for you to keep going. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. Thank you so much for being with us, Kate. It's It's been a pleasure having you. Um, and we would love to hear what you keep going on to do in the future. No worries. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, guys, for listening in live. And we will be back on Saturday with another guest. But that's all for today. Bye-bye. And that's another episode of The Tomato Timer. If you'd like to ask your questions and join us live next week, join the Xenos Discord server. The invite link is in the description. And to learn more about Xenos and how a bunch of students are on a mission of making quality education accessible to all, go to xenos.org. Bye for now.